is about more than the black hole, okay? It really is about his early farm, the ability to get that mech, have the flexibility to get, get that blink dagger early up online for your team, uh, and the threat of the black hole, obviously something that you're parroted over and over, but it really Thanks is true that the threat of the black hole can be as significant as the spell itself. That that spell Five only gets cast about four times Remaining. on average in a pro match by an Enigma. Uh, but certainly Power Three Rangers have just given themselves so many Three options seconds. here Remaining. in terms of stopping that black hole and really locking down a lot of Complexity's heroes. And I don't know that Complexity have those same options. Now, the Morphling is a good pick here. It's very mobile. We've seen Tinker run this hero a lot. It's a hero that can potentially benefit from some of the longer games that we're seeing in 6.82, even in, in 6.82b, uh, but the the pressure is really on them to get this morphling off to a good start in lane. And so I come back to my earlier concerns about the witch doctor. How effective is that going to be as a laning partner for the morphling? Yeah, that's the real thing. I mean, there is some potential damage coming up from the wave form from Cask, but I, again, I just don't know if you're going to stay safe. Morphling's a hero, though, that can survive a lot of initiation with, obviously, his strength morph and, and wave form and his mobility. So it's a hero that I really like also because you have early game aggression if you want through wave form, but you also have late game potential like you talked about. Right. And one of the best heroes for that. So I'm very excited for Complexity. As Moonmander probably is going to pick that hero up. That's a hero I don't see him play oh, too yeah. often, but it uh, should be fun. No, that's a. It's been a great hero lately, and like I said, Tinker have been running this, and and they're. I mean, they're running these ridiculous strats where I, they just kind of go back and forth, trade back and forth for the first forty minutes, and then they just wait for these late game team fights where both their carries, their cores will get a ton of farm, and they'll just generally out execute the opponent. It's been a lot of fun to watch, but here we go. I was hoping we would see something like this at the end. Uh, the rest of PR is just so. They've given themselves a lot of flexibility with the last pick, and they do they do choose to go for that range DPS here to complement the Faceless Void and the Earthshaker uh, with all of this lockdown. Now, it is important to mention, remember that Sniper's headshot got changed, and so he can't insta-cancel that mm -hmm. black hole anymore, which is a little bit of a concern. But again, because you've been smart with the rest of your draft, you already have plenty of Ooh, options. This is what regard. I really like about this pick is that you talk about positioning wise I think it's very important for them to be spread out especially with the black hole with overgrowth and now you have so much to deal with in terms of mobility how do you lock down a sniper how do you lock right. down the face's right. void right. you're going to create so much space for them that even if you do lock down one of these here's there's a good chance you're going to get echoed or you're going to get chronosphered you're going to get swapped raised going to run you down so there's so much to deal with here for complexity right now that i worry for them in this draft because the supports are really strong you've got really strong cores although faces void in the offlane i'm not crazy about as much as it, i used to be with how this hero was played but he's still a very good offlaner and uh he shouldn't have any real reason to go down in this top lane i mean you're going to have aggression maybe coming from a tram protector and from a witch doctor but there's no real damage really on at least not until you get a couple levels of cask right i don't know if they can take this faces void down in the top yeah, lane. they're, they're going to need to, uh, if they get an early rune on the tree, uh, that will help them a lot because obviously haste or DD on tree and protector, they're going to be able to threaten this void up here. But, but yeah, other than that, I think they very they very well could have a hard time zoning out this faceless void, and and that would lead to a lot of trouble for them because they don't. Okay, it is going to be as you said, uh, limps enigma in the off lane, and hard to argue with that given their lineup. Uh, Swindle's viper should have the decided advantage here over Shotchlo mid. Part of what I was saying in the draft, by the way, early on is I think it's it's almost a shame uh, that all this roster turnover hit right around the time that PR had gotten Shotchlo away from uh, the team that used to be Relax, now Hellraisers. Shotchlo is just a remarkably explosive player, and he has a very, very flexible hero pool, uh, and we, we haven't necessarily gotten to see him up, uh, up to his full potential yet with this squad. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. And this is something that I'm very excited for. Power We're going to trade our top cab. What are you doing here? there, buddy? Wow. He's blocked in. They're going to throw the cast kill. Picked up the DD damage. Or double damage rune, excuse me. And he has to salve immediately. He is That's, so lucky uh, that Tree didn't go boots first. Wow. That could have been huge. I'm surprised he was so aggressive with that. I, I mean, he gets the DD rune, but he has to waste the salve because of it. And he could have gone down, man. That's crazy. But Yeah. Uh, 
useful. One thing, look for J4 here. There's a lot on his shoulders in the early game because he really has been doing a lot. They've they've done this before. They've picked kind of unfavorable lane matchups mid and top on the Radiant side. And J4 is really able to control so much of the map early on, roaming around with his Fishers, and help to neutralize some of those early disadvantages. Even if he's not getting the kills, he's preventing those other lanes from being too aggressive on his heroes. Yeah, absolutely. J4 is already roaming around the mid lane, and we'll see if he has an impact early with some roaming kills. Maybe just, you know, pulling some creep camps, getting some experience that way, helping out bottom. Top lane is just going to be kind of void getting experience here, and they really can't lock him down unless they see, obviously, Z Free come in as the Witch Doctor. I mean, yeah. you can see the right click from Riser. There's the Leech Seed as well, but Cheshire and he's already got that just, time lock. Yeah, he can time walk away, and he has time lock, which is doing some yeah. nice damage to Riser if he procs it. Although this he has to waste a lot of regen, though. So This is something, though, that you're seeing. He started off, it's a little unfortunate that he had to blow the south right away as a result of that exchange by the top rune, because he started off with a salve and two sets of tangos, and this is something that you're seeing offlane voids do more and more. They'll go for that early level in time walk so they can trade with the supports here. And you see, he's, he's trading with the tree, and that's it's not usually a hero that you're going to trade with at low levels. Now, that guy has a ridiculous amount of base damage. 87 at level 1. 65, not too bad for the faces void, though, on the other side of things. And he will take a free hit coming out from Riser. So it's just punching central right now. Just two heroes going at it for the most part. But while that's happening, you do have in the mid lane, Shaco. He's sitting on right now a decent amount of CS6. Yeah, right he's out of the Viper. Viper. This is and, impressive. Yeah, this is a really good matchup coming out. I mean, Swindle should be having a great time here. And he's actually getting out laned by a sniper currently so yeah it's a little bit of that stew to wave equilibrium of course but uh, with viper it does hold the advantage with the three denies but still you know you never want to see a sniper get off to this kind of advantage in the first couple of waves no i mean this is going to be him getting maybe an early kill you can see that the the sage's mask yeah. is coming out soon and you get that extra damage that's going to be beautiful it's really about ganking the sniper early and we'll see if they rotate but well, we just said he was trying to gank bottom lane. However, Limp with really great scouting and Eidolons coming through, and yeah. we just said can't get anything done there. So, yeah, that's a that's a really big deal that they they rotated J four over bottom and 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 we just said and, and just couldn't My get anything done. Uh, and yeah, I mean this Enigma is doing very well just to kind of be stable in the laning phase. Might have a cask attempt here, but I don't think anything's coming to this. Yeah, they're trying to put some pressure early on the tower, but they're not actually getting anything done. They're putting some tower damage there. Plasma field's gonna go bring That's some so of the hard to down. do that early against the Eidolons. Yeah. This is, uh, it's gonna be wow. kind of a tough situation. I'm surprised they rotated Z Freak down, though. I mean, I don't know if they really needed him uh, to be down there, but not the worst decision in the world. J4 picks up an end his rune. This is what we call a hero killing rune. Although Swindle does know this is, uh, he has picked this up. There was that ward down in the bottom lane. Um, bottom jungle yeah, and Swindle's got to be careful up. here, but and and really, Shotslow is not quite in the position that you want to see him to to gank the, with a TP in though. Oh yeah, here you go. Block, beautiful. The headshot proc coming out. Swindle, magic missile. We just uh, gets in there and he gets the kill secure. Coming Great out from that TP. Great TP. They did not have enough material on the field there in the mid lane to get that kill without the TP in from we just sick but he made the difference and that is such a help to your sniper you can see he's got the aquila he's going to have boots up by the four minute mark that base damage disadvantage of the sniper against the viper is uh is really nullified now and sniper is going to be able to exploit that great attack animation to cs safely so big early game exchanges here coming out in the favor of pr yeah, that, that's huge. I mean, getting the kill in the mid lane Viper, somebody that really can snowball and just start taking towers and fights uh, as early as like the six to seven minute mark here. And right now he's sitting on level five, so he's doing fine despite the death. But that, that gives Shackle a lock here in this mid lane. I mean, he's sitting on a ring of Aquila now, 200 extra gold as well. He's sitting on level five. He's getting close to six. Um, he's just got to deal with corrosive skin now though, so he has to be careful. I mean, he's pretty squishy. If he takes too many corrosive skin hits, could easily take a lot of damage here, although it is only level one. Yeah, and, and um, headshot will make up a lot for that. Uh, you can really see neither team's able to zone the other offlaner. Saying that, Cheshire Cat's having a little uh, bit of harass put on him. Shacklow oh, getting gosh. caught out, but there's a nice Fisher. However, the Leech Seed did go in the right nice click, job. and Swindle gets the return oh, kill. Vengeance for Swindle here. Midland. Yeah, they really needed to have that. That's, I mean, Viper is supposed to dominate in lane, and it's a little bit concerning, right? Because Viper and Razor both are heroes that rely on having an advantage 
much coming out of the laning phase. They need that fast mech. They need those fast stat items at the beginning of the game. And, you know, considering both off laners aren't really being zoned out here, they're going to have their level six very, very quickly. Uh, the Viper's window is you need to do something to actively prolong the window in this match in which he's being effective. So that gank was really big. Yeah, and there's no reason, especially because Viper is kind of the snowballing hero to a certain extent. If you, if you can't get yeah. him involved early, then that's kind of the problem. But he's sitting back mid lane. It's getting pressured here by Shaklo as well as J4 roaming through again. He's on level three, but not too bad. They do take that tower down bottom. Let's see what does go for next in that bottom lane. So already some extra gold going his way. 800 gold in the bank now. We'll see if he goes for the mech or if they decide to build something else. They pick up the mech on another hero. But Shaklo now is putting pressure on the tower. And even with uh, living armor, they're already starting to take these towers down at six minutes in. Yeah, and interesting, Shachlo is going the traditional sniper build. We've seen a couple. He might die here. Oh, nice Fisher. I don't, I don't know, know if it's going to be enough. enough to save him, though. Yeah, Viper Strike is going to wear off there. And J4 with the body blocks coming through. And Swindle will not be able to get either kill there, but he did put a lot of pressure on that sniper. And Shachlo eats a tree, and he's like, well, I'm back. I'm fine. Listen, 150 <laughs> HP, not it's a just problem. Just a flesh wound. Yeah. yeah. He's just like, yeah, well. I'll yeah, Viper can kill me in like two clicks. No big deal. <laughs> It's a bit bold. We just think doesn't have any regen either, so I don't know what Shackle thinks he's doing here. But uh, Z Freak looking for a top rune now. Six minute yeah. rune's already gone. J4's just gonna right click him. Z Freak's like, well, I'm getting chased. Somebody help. They do have a Maledict and uh, Malphys, and they yeah, will J4 use it. J4 should probably be dead yeah. here. He's got a Fisher up, but I don't oh, think he's gonna be able to get it off. No. Nicely done. Yeah, the Lemp animation is too long against that Malphys. Yeah. So Limp and Z Freak uh, combining up to get a kill. Just a bit of out of positioning from J4. Meanwhile, Moonbander is sitting at the top CS in the game. Yeah. 39. He also has Cheshire a Cat well. is also like two creep kills from six here. And look for them to look for them to maybe set up a TP gank here top. They he can get a three main chronosphere. Yeah, and they really want to take Moonbander down early on in this game. They don't want oh, to let absolutely. him run him up. And, and they're already pressuring the tower. Limp has rotated out of the offlane. In fact, he did so pretty early on. Went to the jungle. Now he's in the lane. Yeah, they got four here, though. Top tower is under attack. There's going to be a time walking chronosphere. There it is, the three-man chrono like you talked about. Z Freak in trouble. Magic missile. Oh, Living my. armor's Root, keeping him alive. Limp so low. Limp will fall to the right click. Z Freak should fall next. It looks like double kill for Nexus as the statically comes through. 63 bonus damage. Great counter initiation. And they defend their tower, although not in deny range. That's exactly what they needed from Cheshire Cat talking about that chronosphere. Yeah, just over aggressive though by complexity. I mean, you, you you've got to know that's coming. That's a very obvious response to an early tower push. And you know, I was gonna talk about before that happened that one of the big differences in the meta is that in 6.81 trading free farm on a razor for free farm on a morphling was something that you would do any day of the week right you are happy to do that in 6.82b i'm not so sure that's optimal because with the changes to glyphs and the tier one tower bounties uh, morphling farming early on is a lot more dangerous but now that razor has those couple of kills in that big fight eh, boy this is a risky tp here too yeah, that was Moon being very bold, but they do have the Malphys okay. coming in. The time walk away, Cheshire Cat, there's the Fisher on his two. That'll stop any aggression, but here comes Man. Nexus. He's got static, like he's chasing Moon down. He wants Limp first and foremost. He can't get the kill, however. Living Armor's going to come through, and Nexus is going to just dive a little too far. Still looking for that tier 1 tower. Oh, oh wow. wow, and Viper takes yeah, it. Dive. Big dive past the tier 1 tower in the radiant mid lane, and Swindle is really starting to flex his muscle on this hero. Yeah, this is where he needs to be aggressive, and he's doing just that. Uh, wow, Moon's got to be careful up here. He's alone, and it's not like he's unkillable. He certainly is. Uh, yeah. J4's coming in. He doesn't have enough mana for Fisher, but Nexus. He also doesn't have enough mana for a, a, a Static Link, so they've got to be careful. Moon's going to get Living Armor. He's still farming away pretty effectively. All, all things considered, 42 last hits, not bad, not terrible. He would like to have more free farm here, but they are doing the right thing and shutting him oh, down, but, or at least trying to. So. Yeah, but he's getting a good trade. I mean, there, there are three and four heroes up here for the last couple minutes, and they haven't really bothered him all that much. I mean, I, I felt like Power Rangers should have taken their gains and left. They've kind of hung out in this top lane, and, and meanwhile, given up the solo kill and their sniper mid, that's a big deal. Here's yeah, the Chrono to try to get Moon. They should probably have him here. Oh, no. He can't wait for him. Oh, he's going to make it out for the time being, but still, oh, no. he's very low, 290 HP. He buys his belt of strength saying, listen, I might die here. He might be able to get out, though. It's a disaster. 
Strength morph, Corona Spear for nothing, and uh, at the very least they take the tower. That's that's Nexus getting it. And his mech is 100% done. That's a full mech purchased up at 10 minutes into Nexus. But but look at the impact. Look at the XP graph already. I mean, you can just see the impact of that last two minutes where you had three and four Power Rangers uh, heroes up there top. I mean, you, you if you're gonna do that at this point in the game, you know this is not the early game Death Ball meta anymore. You got to get a better trade for it than that. Yeah, and, and them giving even a little bit of room to complexity is a bit surprising to me. So, um, Swindle, I think he's going to be after the driving. He's going to have to be the driving force for complexity to stay in this game while Moon stays up top or, or in any lane, really, just to farm up. Because he's nowhere real near his, his fullest potential. He's going to have treads, and then what is he going to get? He's going to try to get a Lincoln Sphere into an Ethereal Blade. That's still a long time away. I think I actually I think complexity is looking pretty good here. I really do. I think they're getting. I think they're just getting the better of the trades here early game. Yeah, you know, even with even with two of their towers down, it's just it's just not that big a deal anymore right now. The big thing for me is, is what can they do up against this razor, and how are they going to deal with this mech? Because if they start fighting and team fighting, they might be in a bit of trouble. However, I agree with you that he's it, not that farm though. I mean, Swindle has a two level lead on him. That's true. A lot of that has to do with obviously the mid lane, and sure, the, it really is just the mech that's kind of just making me scratch my head and say, well, is this really going to be complexity coming out on top? And, and Shaco is also getting a decent amount of farm mid. Yeah, he did go down twice, but um, you know, you look at Power Rangers, they're still trying to keep the aggression on. They are rotating the supports through. The supports are only level four and five. That's the real problem for me right now is they're not getting any levels on these supports. Exactly. Which is sick is. He's walking through these trees and not really caring. He just throws up an observer ward, but they ping him out. They know that he's there. Lim comes through. Malphite yeah, is gonna he could fly. Be in a bit of trouble here. Yeah, uh, with uh, with Swindle rotating down, he's screwed. He's gonna try to get to the ancients now. No, no such luck for you there. First you coming in. That'll be on Z Freak alone. And they're running at him, but they gotta be careful. There's the rest of the complexity squad going through. Meanwhile, top lane, Shaco getting dope. Moon Meander, solo oh kill, goodness. and the tier one tower. What a disaster. No, Dude, there's the kill Don't do out. it, don't do no, it. He wants it. Chronosphere is gonna go. He cannot get the last hit. He's got the strength for now he's, he's out of mana. He's out of mana. And they get the deny coming in. Cheshire Cat has the double damage. Moon Meander, time lock proc. He's gonna fall. Oh no, but bottom lane, they will get the kill. Swindle catches out Nexus. Big pickup for them. Yeah, that, that's the bigger moon. pickup. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Viper is, is getting so big right now. You can see that drum treads, Aquila, and 1,200 gold here, 12 and a half minutes. Uh, he is getting big, and, and the Razor right now is the most impactful hero on Power Rangers that you could kill. What you said about the mech was absolutely right, but again, you can see the big deal in this game is that when Complexity bring the four heroes, into one lane like Power Rangers do, uh, did earlier, they're immediately Radiant able to get something for it. Yeah, and they can't really defend Radiant this tower now. There's, there's, there's going to be a glyph, attack. but this, I mean, they don't get the tower top lane. Moon Manor goes down, and that's just kind of a, an unfortunate decision making process on his part, but they do get the tower down bottom. They can slim in an extra bit of gold. He's going to have his mech done now. He'll just purchase it up and probably build towards a, uh, a blink dagger here in the next couple of moments. So you see Power Rangers trying to man up on mid lane, but uh, this tower, which was already below half health not too long ago, has been living armored back up to almost full. Swindle is here. They have Glyph. If they want to fight this, they certainly can. Oh, There's no Chronosphere. They're getting in position. They're ready to yeah, go. Yeah, they're, vo they're vulnerable here. I mean, Void's nowhere near. Uh oh, Nexus, you are in trouble. Static Link is going to go with the Leech Seed. Really not helping. Waveform coming in. Moon Meander's even getting involved, and they grab the kill. Mega kill streak for Swindle. This guy's balling out of control. Uh, this is one of the worst heroes that you can feed like this at this point in the game. I mean, people people worry about feeding carries, and, you know, okay, obviously in pubs that's bad, but, I mean, yeah, Morphling is a hero that if you feed, he's going to end the game in 20 minutes. Swindle is a hero that if you feed, he's going to end the game in five. Uh, yes. You really have to be very careful about giving anything more to him right now. Meanwhile, Complexity make the entire three-man rotation over to this bottom lane, and they're looking for J4, who smartly says, I have an Observer Ward here. There's there's no reason to be in this position. And Nexus TPs as well. Some aggressive rotations, but while this is happening, they're rotating top. Swindle has no Viper Strike, but he can push Cheshire Cat out of the lane for sure. And Cheshire yeah, actually This is very smart. Away. Yep. He gets his Mask of Mattis on time as well. 14 minutes. The offline Cheshire Cat places Void is doing pretty well. Suddenly, though, Morphling's up to the second most net worth, and that's just as Aquila treads in 1,700 gold being effective here. Meanwhile, bottom lane, maybe uh, an engagement on Limp. They have uh, they have a lot to take him down, but Nature's Guy's going to go through. They want Limp to get in there and black hole, but it's on cooldown. He yeah. used it. I'm not sure when. 
what a difference though i mean compare compare what it feels like right now uh in this meta to be to have two of your tier one towers down and you're morphling you know uh right around halfway a little less than halfway to his lincoln sphere i mean you'd be really kind of feeling panic in 6.81 and 6.82 this is fine uh oh headshot proc oh god that now was, it's not fine that that was not the best play for moon I don't. I'm not sure what he was thinking. Waveforming for. He had though. 90 That's... agility and three strength. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's on. He's on max agi and I. I think he maybe forgot where his morph was, but that's that's unfortunate because that really does set him back. That was really poor. Now they're gonna chrono up the limp via shot. Assassinate's gonna go. It's gonna bring him down. Overgrowth is gonna fly. Does nothing to help out his teammates. Meanwhile, Swiddle getting fissured. All of a sudden, this fight not going completely his way. But there's gonna be the ultimate coming up from Z Freak. But the backtracks, Cheshire Cat now gonna get away, swap on the backside, help out his teammate. Cheshire Cat out of mana, wow. but they don't get a return kill. They lose limp, they lose the waveform morphling. Oh yeah, boy. that that was almost that actually turned out better for complexity than I thought it was going to. Uh, that was a wonderful My zoning face. ultimate there by Z Freak to kind of save the fight for them and force PR back. That, that could have been a lot worse. Yeah, it really could have. Now, Shotslow does have his Midas and 2,300 gold. So, yeah, I mean, you were right earlier to point out how well he's come back from a kind of a rough start in that middle lane where he gave up a couple solo kills to Swindle. But uh, on the back of a couple mistakes here by Moon Meander and the rest of his team creating a bit of space, uh, this sniper is, is caught up nicely in farm. Yeah, absolutely. And not that Moon can't farm effectively, and he's still, you know, you know that kill hurts him, but it certainly doesn't put him out of the game. Um, he's but still boy, has that, time to work with, so. That blink on Sniper, this is, I think, a pretty good item choice right now. It, in terms of his positioning and his safety in these fights, I mean, there's really no way for him to tank up effectively against this complexity lineup. The only answer is mobility. And Cole are going to go ahead and try and sneak an early Roche here. They do have the medallion on, no, that's the dire side that has the medallion on on the bench there's no medallion on complexity yeah this is the thing they don't have the oh, damage to take it down without i mean you look at the rotations coming through power rangers they smoke up right under this observer ward get out oh. complexity time to get out of dodge leave go home no fight should be taken here even with black hole and you can see nexus and power rangers are sitting on the high ground right now looking for a potential initiation moon is going back in uh he's gonna get assassinated all right he's like well they know i'm here clearly He's trying to bait this very, very well, but Power yeah. Rangers are not having any of it. No, this is this is the this is the you know we know you know kind of thing, next <laughs> level thinking. Uh, but I think this is gonna this is gonna end in nothing because neither team is gonna commit to this. Oh, or Cheshire Cat has his Chronos for he's gonna walk right into the pit. Okay. Um, that, hi there. He doesn't want a Chrono because if he uses the Chrono now, oh, he goes to the high ground, and he Chronos only Z Freak uh, currently. Now oh, gonna go through. walks into it. Oh god, meanwhile the black hole, it's gonna be on a two, but immediately cancelled by the Fisher. There's the overgrowth, Cheshire Cat getting swapped out, but there's the wave for Moon Meander cleaning up. One for one trade, now Nexus getting caught low. Swindle doing some work on this Razor. This will be a huge pickup, and it is. Swindle's unstoppable, they're still looking for more, now they can enter the Roche pit. And it ended up being a bait of a bait of a bait for complexity. And they get it done. I mean, this to me, you know, with roster turnover, co sometimes comes a little bit of lack of coordination, lack of practice together, and and maybe being a little less prepared than you'd or otherwise be. You have to know that Swindle that Swindle's going to do this on his oh viper. My Lord. You have to be ready for this. This was not the right play coming out from Pro Rangers. They really wanted to stop this from happening, but in turn, they give a double kill away to Moon Meander, and all of a sudden, somebody that was at a thousand gold sitting at seventeen hundred now, even closer to his Lincoln Sphere. Fisher comes through, just kind of annoying complexity. Aegis is now picked up to Moon Meander. What a great turn of events for complexity in the American squad here against Power Rangers. Yeah, they, they have taken full command of this match right now. And it, interestingly enough, it, it probably has less to do with the Aegis right now than it does just how much they got out of those last couple of engagements, getting kills on their cores and deaths on the enemy core heroes. Uh, you know, Viper is sitting at uh, tops on the board at, at, by almost 2K here in net worth over the Morphling, his teammate. All of a sudden, that Midas uh, doesn't really look like it's paying for itself anymore. You know, what a difference a couple minutes can make. Complexity had a solid lead in this match, uh, but now I feel like they've got a chokehold on the game. Yeah, absolutely. Look at the net worth chart. 5,000. It was only 2,500 before that fight happened. And 
Um, and, and more so than anything, it's just the numbers. I think it's just getting the map control, feeling Absolutely. safe from Umeander, farming up, and, 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 and having Power Rangers just say, well, listen, we can't really take another fight like that in the next couple of minutes. I mean, that's just awful. That was just a bad play for us. So, Moon's going to be farming just fine in the top lane. Ultimate Orb is ready to go. Meanwhile, Chronosphere mid lane swindle. And they didn't give him the ages, but look how tanky he is. This He's is fine for the right time. Match Missile Assassinate is nice. going to be the damage, but he will not go down. Cheshire Cat getting swapped out. Waveform, they might take both of these kills. The time walk away. Now they focus on Weeja Sick. But Swindle does fall in the end. It looks like a Fisher came out of the backside and brought him down. Yeah. Nice use of that spell by J4, and he, again, he's been on point with his Fishers just all match long, but uh, it, it hasn't been enough. I mean, really, you just haven't felt the impact from some of these other uh, PR heroes that you'd want to see. And, and yeah, Nexus is really, I, I don't know, I, I don't really have the stats to back this statement up yet, but Safe Lane Razor just does not feel like it's been that impactful to me in a lot of the matches that I've seen it recently. It just... It feels like there are better options out there, especially right. for the late game, and, and we're seeing right. that with the Morphling right now in Moonmander. Like, and also, like usually you'll see a Razor pick up a point booster, or at the very least, maybe even a negative if you're having a fat, fantastic game. But you look at what he's got. Nexus has got 1,200. He's just going to get the point booster right now at 21 minutes in, and like he has no other real farm. He's got like Phase right. Aquila and, and a Mech. That's not really doing enough for you, I think, in this game, especially no, when they I mean man fight. They're just getting caught out and dying. I mean, I think you, you just, you push the timing back of those of those big pushes, right? Uh, 15, 20 minutes. I mean, it used to be, think about how many games you cast near the end of 6.81 and ask yourself in how many of those games were all six tier two towers up at the 20 minute mark. Uh, I mean, many not, not many. And that's the norm now. And just pushing the timing of those mid game pushes back by just five minutes, I feel like has a big impact on Razor's effectiveness. And, and now uh, Morph does have his Lincolns and his farm is just going to take off from here. This almost feels like we're back to, you know, TI3, TI2 yeah, days. We'll hold that thought. Nexus is getting caught out as he's getting uh, reach seated right yeah, from the form down, overgrowth. Nexus will mech, but he dies momentarily. And that's a mega kill streak for Moon. But as I was saying, it almost feels like we're back to TI2, TI3 days. And it, it feels like the same exact patch, but just with more heroes and a couple of cool changes coming through. Um, and, and it actually makes the game very exciting, and I think the bounty change recently in 6.8 to be really helped out this patch. Although I still think Death Prophet is a solid hero and it's very difficult to deal with, uh, you still have ways to deal with it just by going through the late game. And all of a sudden we're seeing Medusa as this like standard pickup, and just because <laughs> she's a late game hero, like... She can take the game late like crazy. So. Yeah, now, I mean, I, I think they, uh, you know... Obviously, I, I dislike the first incarnation of the golden XP bounties a lot, but I, I think that this current incarnation may may be very good for the game because what we're seeing is uh, we're seeing supports get a lot more levels off these mid-game engagements, and I think that's really good that, you know, especially with tower gold bounties getting nerfed, I think it's really critical to help those supports get resources in some way, and, and the, the one bounty that's still very much in place is that XP, especially in the mid-game when heroes are leveling very quickly. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, it's something to get the supports back into things where it's, right. when, when, it, when you were a support later on down the game and, and you just felt like you had no impact just because you were getting caught out, you were so low level, you had no items down. Well, let that's me go on the case. Oh, oh no, oh, Cheshire Cat, what a bait, the Mantis style from Swindle Melons. They had no idea. Womp womp indeed, Cheshire Cat. Boy, oh, his my his God. eyes got big and said, guys, I got this one. I'm bringing us back. No, my friend, unfortunately, no. you do not. <laughs> that is uh, a hey, bit rough for Cheshire Cat. This leaves now the tier 2 tower open in the bottom lane. They're going to try to pressure hey, this. They have no real team fighting without that corner store. However, Moon, you got to be careful, friend. He does have the urn charge, and he will be able to regen up with living armor, but uh, he's Man, trying he to get that tower aggro off. Look out, buddy. Also, they have a, a blink initiation from J4. They have Echo Slam. They're going to try to defend this. Moonmeter runs right in. Waveform's up. We just think he's actually gonna fall. Adaptive strike. Easy kill for Moon. They just overrun the radiant team and they get pushed yeah. back. Just an easy kill. Who needs a shotgun, my man? One barrel is enough right there on the Ventral Spirit. I mean, and this guy's boy, ridiculous now. Shotla needs to be pretty careful up here. They know where he is. No blink though. They, they actually have vision. The cast goes through, but he does blink. Oh, oh but he blink. Oh, oh and no! He got he's in the oh my god! He's actually still alive. He's fine currently. They don't know that he didn't TP out, but now it throws the shrapnel down. He was low. He can't really engage. 
TP up at the top lane. Cheshire Cat has to time walk out. Swindle, meanwhile, is going to push this mid lane with the Manta style. And, and there's Riser coming up. Ooh, look out, buddy. You're going to get Leech Seed, and you're going to die if you get any closer. They do see J4 as well. It looks like maybe the drum charge getting popped. Swindle looking for a Viper Strike. J4 has to blink away as well. And they've just out pressure. Uh, yeah, look at look rankers. at the total map control that Complexity now has. Uh -oh. oh, wow. Limp in some trouble. Mech is on him. He's getting living armor. He's still alive. Mech will keep him alive. Echo Sled nice. coming through. Is the damage there? Swap up. Lumiander trying to go to work here on Cheshire Cat. We'll bring him down. Nas Woodle coming. He's dealing the right click. Double kill. Triple kill for Moon Meander. He's godlike. The only one surviving here is Jacqueline. He's trying to get out, but what a great fight coming out for Complexity again. They lose Limp, but they don't even care. They're going to take this tier 2 tower, and that's that's pretty much... That's going to be rough for Power Rangers to get back into this game now. J4 is just doing everything you could ever ask to put his team on his back. I mean, his combos have just been out of sight this game, but it's just not enough. I mean, nope. it just feels like Power Rangers don't have enough to follow up that magnificent Earthshaker Earth combo in these fights. And now Moonmander suddenly is at 5,000 gold. If he wants a shotgun, he could pretty much buy it out right now. So... Um, he actually has, he has plenty of money to buy it if he wants to go for it. So, And then they'll just wait for an extra Roshan and then just take a couple of kills using that shotgun. And they're, yeah, he's they're going to Scotty, so. and I agree with this. He's going to go straight Scotty. And this is actually, I think, even better because this gives him a lot of tank ability. I agree. He just goes straight Agi. He'll have plenty of health anyways. And then you can always build into the Ethereal Blade later. And not even you don't even need it this game. I mean, you're blowing up people already without the sky oh, yeah. or without the shotgun like you talked about. I mean, about, look, at, so. look, at the, look at the HP, right? I mean, Sniper and Vengeful Spirit both have identical 929 HPs. I mean, you saw how uh, Moon was so able to blow We Just Zick up with one barrel of the shotgun there bot lane. I mean, why worry about it? Just tank yourself up and go to town. Yeah, I mean, this is just... Moon is in a really great position, and he actually has plenty for... Well, he, he's he's about... Yeah, I think he's enough for the... Um, in just a minute, he's enough for the Scotty, so... Cheshire Cat's actually going for an Aggative Scepter. It feels like he's forced into this decision. And this is not giving yeah. you damage, although you already have the Sniper. I guess the extra lockdown's huge. Well, but it, the, the real, to me... The real thing that they need to happen is they need Nexus to somehow finish up this Aghanim Scepter and become a factor in these fights uh, because we really haven't felt his presence in many or any of these engagements uh, and they desperately need another damage source, especially with Cheshire Cat being forced into the Aghanims. Well, speaking of Cheshire Cat, he's going to get Viper Strike. Time walk gets canceled. Now he goes to the trees and they're going to try to get out of here alive and he will make it. No, Lip, no! Oh, no. Celebratory no. black hole? <laughs> Use the midnight pulse first, man. Don't have to commit that black hole if you don't see anybody there. All right, well. well. It was like, you know, Cheshire Cat spotted them in Chronosphere earlier. It's only fair. It was like same location on the map, too. <laughs> Difference is one, one ability has a shorter cooldown than the other. <laughs> this is true. This is very true. It's like black hole is like the last ability you want to use there. Uh, I mean, you know I, what? They are to the point though where they can they can win a fight without the black hole. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but well. Meanwhile, this I mean, tower, that. that's half sniper's HP with the uh, one blast. <laughs> it's a dap strike without a freaking shotgun just kills him essentially. Scotty's now flying out for Moon Meander. This tier one tower was at half health not too long ago. It was it's full health now. They they can't actually do anything to this tower. Moon Meander yeah. finishes up his Scotty. 120, 122 agility, 1400 health still, plenty of armor, 27 Jeez. armor. Jeez, How he's, at, he's at max agi and still has 1400 health. He's doing, okay. oh lord, he's doing 225 a shot. It, How do you uh, kill is, him? You don't. You, you don't kill him. You, you hope that he plays a little bit cocky as he did earlier and goes goes too far forward. But like we say, with, with 1400 HP starting off with max agi, yeah, that's, that's kind of a nightmare. With... A Lincoln Sphere on top of all of it. And he's just pounding Roche. And Medallion goes, he might be able to soul this. The Scotty's slowing the attack speed of Roche on so much. Even one bash will not ruin Moon Meander's good day. Moon Meander is probably having the game. He's feeling it, man. 10 2 oh, 2. Yeah. If I'm in Moon Meander's shoes, I love this type of Morphling game. Just being able to go to town on these squishy heroes. And Power Rangers have got to find a way to deal with him. And I don't know if there's any real way other than a Chronosphere plus yeah, I... full all-out damage and all of your cooldowns on Moonmander. Yeah, I mean, you, you think back to that fight 
uh, that that Power Rangers won in the top lane earlier, where Cheshire Cat got that three man Chronosphere. You know, that's really one of the only ways that you can see them taking an engagement right now. I mean, you know, Faceless Void does do quite a bit of damage right now with Mask and Madness uh, Maelstrom in his Chronosphere, but he just needs that perfect Chrono. There's there is now so much control coming out on the side of complexity. I mean, you're looking at 27 armor. That's 63% physical damage resistance. Even if you get a Chronosphere, you're really relying on time lock prox. I think more so than yeah. anything for Cheshire oh, sure Cat. Are. So you sure <laughs> are, and point, you just you just totally once again. Oh, I don't want to harp on it, but you need Nexus. You need him to get that Aghanim Scepter up yesterday. <laughs> that's that's not happening. It seems anytime soon. He actually has it maybe flying out. Yeah, he does. Okay, well I'm wrong. Nexus actually has his Aghanim Scepter yeah. flying out currently, so that's good. <laughs> But there's also an Agnum Scepter, but this time on a support, your Witch Doctor, Z Freak, that Death oh, Ward man. Forget about he's it. He's gonna look at it go. I think yeah. it's uh, complexity's time now for them to shine. I and think they uh, I think they could pretty easily end the game here. How much time uh, there's gotta be like only about two minutes left here on the Aegis. That may be the one Roshan, factor. Didn't he? Hmm? he just took Roshan. Oh that's right, that's right. That was the I was okay. Yep, got totally confused. Right, he's got to have almost five, which means that they can very easily take the tier two and, and yes. pro possibly pressure the racks. Yeah, Cheshire Cat sitting in the top lane, but he keeps away. His Work acting sucks, scepter dude. is done. So, I mean, this is this is it. I mean, this is about as far as you're going to get for power range. Is it? They lose this fight, this game is going to be over. Buyback status. I mean, they just bought a ton of items here. So, you only have one really on Cypher. J4, important. And now there's a Necro 2 coming out for Limp. Pushing up to the high ground is not going to be that big of a deal anymore. No, I, I like this. I like this Necro book mainly because, again, you are focused on ending the game by 40 minutes right now. There's really no reason to give that sniper a chance to come back into play with the Void and the Razor. Uh, you know, as you as we talked about, Power Rangers are starting to recover. They're getting some key items up. They're not out of this match yet, but this is a time where complexity still has a huge advantage. And I really, I wish they would push. Oh, he's okay. Moon's got boots of travel anyway, so he's going to heal up. He's going to replicate. Yeah, he's going to push out yep. bottom real quick and then replicate back toward that mid lane where Z Freak is being followed by that Viper replicate. So push in mid, keep top pushed in by Riser yeah. as well. And Now this is something I can really get behind because we don't, I feel like we don't talk about lane equilibrium enough at this point in the game. This is a really good way to mitigate uh, the risk that you take in forcing yes. a fight is make sure yes, that yes, all yes. three lanes are pushed onto the opponent's side of the map. Even if you lose a fight here, you're, you're still having to push down mid and, and trying to get towards a tier one tower in the mid lane, let alone a tier two tower. That's the crazy thing. And Moon Manor picks up a double damage rune. It is time for them to go. Oh, There's goodness. no point in pushing up bottom anymore. He's going to head down there currently. Maybe try to pick off Cheshire Cat. He's going to pick up a TP scroll and maybe get out of there. Uh, yeah, Cheshire I mean, Cat. If Moon starts right clicking one of these heroes with their Mask of Madness active, good lord. Adaptive Strike is backtrack. Cheshire Cat. Time walks TP's away. Moon Manor now. He's got bots. He can bots down towards that mid lane. And if he wants meanwhile. To. Oh, yeah. Shachlo gives up a kill to Swindle again. And he might have to force a buyback. If they push down mid or top, which is exactly what they're doing, they might actually have to force out a buyback now for Shachlo. So that's a really big pickup. Yeah, it and, is. Uh, and it, it just just arresting the sniper's progression. And then again, if he has to buy back, I think, I think any chance that PR had of coming back really, really got hurt by that. Bots and now 2,000 gold. Moonmander just bought his bots and he's sitting already on 2,000 gold. Plasma yeah. Field, Fisher, Adaptive Strike in the high ground does some nice damage to Nexus. There's the Living Armor on Moonmander. Again, he still has the Lincoln Sphere. Very hard to take down. 1,500 health. He's taking a lot of damage coming out here from the tower, I believe. There's going to be the Glyph coming through. So Glyph forced, and this is it. This is their time. Regen up and now Moon. He goes back to work on the high ground. The tier 3 tower under siege. J4 comes out with the Fisher, and will stun Moon Manor for a second. They're still in the high ground. Tier 3 tower is going to take a spill. They will not have to use the buyback coming out for the Sniper, but this is where it gets difficult. Moon Manor is still on the front lines here. They've got yeah, to try to take do him down. About him. Mjolnir yeah, is even now with up the in Mjolnir sniper. Shot There's the chrono going through. They're going to find Loop here, and he's in some trouble. He might go down before he can even get his mech off here, but look at the damage. We just take falling low. There's going to be the Viper Strike. Static Link's Windle. Nexus trying to TP away. It looks like he will make it. No! 
And they will grab the kill. Aegis is down. Meanwhile, Leech the Cheshire Cat trying to get out. He's overgrowth. There's the waveform coming in. Here comes Moon Meander. The right click, the adaptive strike. Oh, Big echo from J4. What can they get done with this, though? Magic missile. Moon's still doing work. He is falling low. Strike more. We just take a back to fall. No! He stays alive. It's a team wipe coming out. Beautifully done for Power Rangers. J4. Again with the huge echo slam and saves his team, enough. and they get back into it. I, I mean, the difference again between that fight and the ones we were talking about earlier is that Shatchelor's sniper now has just enough items. He can deal damage behind those monstrous combos coming out of J4. All of a sudden now, when you got that echo slam. That totem and that fissure being popped right on top of your forehead. You've also got a sniper shooting you in the brain pan. And that was enough for them to win that fight. They had just enough damage to turn it there. Very impressive by Power Rangers. And they're now back in this match. And that, that's actually just a huge pick up. I mean, that kid, they say, listen, you know, we, we were talking about how maybe this game was complex and just pushing down and taking a set of racks and that was going to be it. But no, Power Rangers fight back and they say, listen, we're back into this one. You're dead for another 20 seconds. We're taking a tier 2 tower. Tower, a tier one tower. We're getting a lot of gold off the back end of this. They certainly are. That's just our cat getting the tower. His agonim set through maelstrom now done. And this is where it gets difficult for complexity now. With that team play going the way of Power Rangers, they're back in. They have plenty of items to deal with these engagements coming out. And Lip needs to avoid getting a Chronosphere. That's that's just about it. He's got to stay alive in these team fights, and he cannot survive for the life of him. Yeah, and also, I mean, we mentioned earlier that the six point eight, uh, the six point eight two kill bounties had been had been toned down quite a bit. But this is an area where they still can come into play, and you can see it uh, on Shachlo's sniper that had just completed his Mjolnir right before that fight, had almost no money left, is now sitting on four point four k gold. And this sniper is going to get farmed, and he's going to get farmed in a hurry. Absolutely. So. This is where it gets, you have to try to find a way to, tip, to bring down the sniper, I think, in, in all of these engagements. But And it's still doable. I mean, you've still got a Morphling that is still ahead. And you've still got Swindle's Viper that, oh my goodness, I mean, now just picks up his AC. And this might be the uh, they still have quite a edge. lead. But this, the this, difference the difference is they can no longer afford to approach these team fights with reckless abandon. Yes. They let J4 get another one of these perfect combos off and they're hosed. Yeah, they won't have any buybacks for another couple of moments. I think they just sit back and farm and just take map control. Uh, really good vision though coming out from the radiant side. They have vision right around the Roche Pit and obviously as you can see the, the Dire Ancient. So this is very important. And Swindle though, this is this is Selectress might be the item that pushes them over the edge. You think about a Morphling doing all that damage with his Scotty and his right click, you add an Assault Kuras on top of that and the armor reduction that it gives you, and suddenly it, it, it feels like he could just man fight. Not that he couldn't before, but he could pretty much kill all five heroes on his own. Yeah, but it's still, I mean, no matter no matter how much damage you stack, I mean, Morphling's, uh, Morphling's attack range is still only 350 compared to the 950 of Sniper. I mean, yeah. this is... Uh, the team fight positioning here and the control coming out from the supports are what's going to decide these fights. I mean, we're, we really have to see uh, very, very good use of some of these AoE control abilities. And, and the, team that, the team that handles that aspect of the fight better is, is going to win. Both teams have plenty of damage now. Just our cat time walk Chronosphere Swindle on. Very tanky though. Tough to bring down. Though. They have no real damage coming out. Swindle is gonna get static linked. He might, he might be able to walk away from this and will now Viper Strike Cheshire Cat gets swapped away, but he's still inside of that wall of the fissure. Now the ultimate oh comes through God. break. Beautifully done. You've gotta be Look kidding. Go. Agonim Scepter doing work. Exus is gonna fall as well. Waveform, it's a team wipe. Double kill for Moonman to Z-Freak the hero. That complexity needed in that engagement. Look wow. at it go, boys. Oh, oh my, my goodness. God. What a wish, Dr. O. Z-Freak just plops it down. They take a huge fight. Started off perfectly with only Swindle getting caught out in the Chronosphere. He takes little to no damage. They don't even need the black hole from Limp. Buyback status. Boom. There it goes. You've got to buy back. You've got to defend your bases. Moon Meander is pushing up to the high ground currently. And they've only got one more. That'll be a J4 as Venge does buy back. No buyback from the faces void, but that's a really huge engagement now coming out for complexity. They're going to push the high ground. Glyph's going to go. We're not done yet. Nexus is still ready to go. No death ward up now for another 26 seconds. Moon Meander getting plopped right click down low, but still fine. Mask of Madness goes. Shrapnel as well. 
And Moon's trying to make a fight happen here. And Shock will get it caught out the sky, but there's the magic missile now. Strength morphing. Static Link is going to fly as well. It only likes a little bit of damage. Blink Overgrowth coming out. They have the Epicenter. They have the Fisher oh, coming in. Look at it go CP. again. Nexus getting caught low. Moon still going to town on Shocklow. Can he get this kill? One right click away. Not able to get it. There's the Echo Slam. J4 fighting up. Moon so low. Assassinate. He might live here through it. And will waveforms oh. out of the Assassinate. A double kill for Swindle on the back end of that engagement. They still have yet to take the rack. Skies hit the buildings. They can't do it. No, now it's, they it, think it's that's fine. The I mean, way. they have total control of the map. This is what we were talking about earlier with uh, the the dominance that they're exerting over these lanes. All of a sudden, you're able to take a one fight like that and just go pressure all three lanes. And and Power Rangers is going to have a really hard time getting out of their base oh, now. Oh gosh, Black Hole just for Cheshire yes. Cat. He yes. will fall. Death Ward knows. <laughs> Celebratory Death Ward. <laughs> you better just start dancing. He says and. The Moon Manor replicates back in, and uh, this might be the beginning of the end here, as there's only two left now for Power Rangers, and quite a stout defense coming out from the Power Rangers squad, not nearly enough from the Bell Russians, and Moon Manor's right clicking him down. Yeah. GG, well played, is called from Cheshire Cat, and that's gonna be it. Game number one of a two game series, Complexity. The American squad, they take it up against a pretty stout Power Rangers defense and a very good draft. You just have to love what you've seen lately from Complexity. It just feels to me like they've been steadily improving. Uh, they've shown a lot more consistency over the past couple of weeks. I mean, they barely missed out on a spot at ESL against Sneaky Nick's Assassins in the final. Uh,